So we're going to do, as I said, you can close that if, if it feels like the heat starts escaping. You can close that up. Okay, so we're going to work with shoulders today. You can sit however you feel most comfortable. So when you do prolonged sitting, if you're not used to sitting on the floor, you'll find that fidgeting is your friend. So feel free, like there's nothing about this arrangement that's affecting the parts that we are working today. So if you want to sit the switch, um, if you want to put your feet out all the way, just feel free to move that around during class. I'm not going to, I'll cue you for a little bit of change, but be comfortable. Um, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to work with our hands a little bit because the hands and the shoulders are really, you know, put the backs and the hands together. That's the first thing. Getting the backs and the hands together and touching the thumbs. And okay, so then you're going, okay, what's, you're looking, you're playing with the amount of motion you have in the lower arm is really what, yes, you're using your fingers, but it's really like the range of motion of the lower arm and the wrist. How is that? So you're like, okay, my thumbs don't touch it. And you come up a little bit higher, get to the point in which they do, and if they don't today, that's fine. You just want to maybe drop into this position. When you're sitting on the airplane, or when you're at your desk and you take, need a little bit of break, or if you're sitting in the passenger seat, not the driver's seat, like my brother tried to do. All right, and then you're going to drop this down without losing contact between the thumbs. So you're like, okay, yeah, I see some of the tension here, or where, wherever you end up feeling it specifically. You kind of play with that range of motion. Right? And then we don't always have to stay right on the line. We can move it a little walk like an Egyptian. Um, and you can kind of see, like, oh, as I go over here, maybe this shoulder hikes up. So the, what you're doing is you're just you're putting your parts kind of on a grid as you move them so that you can see when you're, you say move left, maybe another motion that you didn't say is happening passively. All right, and coming out. Turn the palms up. We're going to work with just the left hand first and you pull the finger down. As you're looking at yourself, you have shoulder, elbow, wrist. And that, these are all in a line. You see this here? Compared to this, can you see how the elbow is inside the shoulder? So you're going to push that out so that the elbow is underneath the shoulder directly. And I don't mean inferior, I mean in a vertical. And then the wrist is in the same plane as those three points. So you wouldn't want here, I've got my shoulder and my elbow, but I've got my wrist in a different plane. So you're going to pull it over, finger straight down. Then you want to think, I want this joint and this joint and this joint in the same plane or in a plane that's parallel to this plane. They're actually not in the same plane. And then down the next one. If you turn it from the side, you can see if you have any buckling fingers, meaning when you're pulling to extend these joints, you're like, oh, I can see that one doesn't want to straighten. So that's the one that needs to straighten the most. All right, you can go here and do the same thing. Notice, you see my line here, how I pull this finger and this finger is not being stretched in a plane that's perpendicular or parallel to this plane here, how I've got kind of an angle out and bring it in and make sure that I'm going straight back. And the next. Started here. All right, 
So it's a little bit of a little bit of movement. Light load, meaning you're not carrying very much weight. So now we're going to start applying a little bit of weight. So you're going to come on down to your hands and knees. And you're looking at your hands again. Yes, you're on your hands and your knees, but we're focusing on the hands for this pass. And you can do the front view or you can do the side view, but really for now, you're just looking straight down at your hands. And you're going to try to spread your fingers. That's the goal of this one here is put your hands up and spread them. And you can see the ease at which your fingers move when you take your wrist out of it. But when you start adding wrist extension, what happens to the thumb? You extend the wrist and then the thumbs no, they lose their kind of range of motion, which means the range of motion of your thumb is dependent on the range of motion of your wrist. And you really want range of motion of your thumb to not be dependent on the range of motion of your wrist, right? So stretch the thumbs out as close to it as you can when you are not extending your wrist. And then you're going to start extending your wrist, which is you're going to go forward, which is going to... Um, decrease the angle between the hands and the lower arm and you're going to go forward and back and you're playing with this extension so you can kind of see okay movement of my wrist moves my thumbs perhaps or wants my thumbs to buckle so you're going to shift back and forward a little bit um, but you want to make sure that your hands are not just flat inactive pancakes on the ground push Push down. In fact, push down more through here. Your wrist is going to be pushing down on the ground simply because of your weight, meaning it takes no work for you to push your the heel of your palm down. It takes more work to push that right below the fingers, right? The kind of the upper palm into the ground. And, and just like when we're working with our feet, how we lift our toes a little bit, could you lift your fingertips? A teeny bit without necessarily lifting the rest of the hand and make sure you're at the width of your shoulders paying attention to how narrow you go says a lot about your your use of your shoulders right so you want to start when you come into quadruped being shoulder width apart and not really your shoulder width apart right now but your shoulder width apart once you have wide broader shoulders right so you have to kind of go a little bit wider and you can kind of go side to side, so it doesn't have to be this stiff quadruped, but you're really going, okay, let's make a circle, right? All the way around. Right hand, left hand. Kind of get a feel for that a little bit. All right, now bend your elbows. So I'm on my hands and my knees. I'm gonna bend my elbows, but I want my elbows to point towards my thighs. A lot of times they'll want to bend out to the side, so you have kind of more of this, this position. What I want you to do, if you watch, is pull them, rotate them in. Once you have that, you're going to start lowering towards the floor. If you make it to the floor, fine. And you're practicing looking at your hands as you do that. Come up a few times and down again. All right, and then you're going to come on up, and you can just sit back. If sitting back doesn't work for you, you can just sit down to the side or stand up. I don't care. And then you're going to push the backs of your hands together as they were earlier on. <clears throat> All right, and then we'll go back here and move the fingers. Um, that's another thing. When you pull the fingers down, you want to notice if you lose extension of the wrist. So it's like the wrist is the first thing to extend, and then the fingers extend from there. When you're really tight through the hands, what will tend to happen is you'll give up this extension and do just the fingers. Because this plus this, because of where your muscles are, increases the, the, the stretch, the tension. So it's a natural aversion, or it's a natural way of avoiding the stretch, but as you add the finger to just decrease the wrist extension, it's like, no problem, I'll stretch my finger here. But when you combine the two, and you can play with it so you can feel the difference, flex and extend your wrist 
keeping the same tension on your fingers to see how wrist extension changes that. And then you can do the other side. So we go back. You might want to turn so you can see yourself from the side. We're going to do a similar exercise that we just did. Only watch me here for a second. You're going to have your hands wide, shoulder width. Your shoulder width needs to be a little bit wider than your pelvis width. So a lot of times we put the knees pelvis width, and just because it's easy, we end up lining the wrists up with the knees. And so then we end up with pelvis width, wrist placement, too narrow, okay, your hands are down on the outsides here, right, so your hand placement needs to be wider than your pelvis, which means it needs to be wider than your knees, which should be pelvis width. All right, got it? All right, when I lower, so first relax your spine down here, like, ugh, what is that? You're not at work anymore. You're here. Let's relax. You let that drop all the way. All right, now, don't tense back up here, but maybe don't relax so much. So find kind of a happy medium. You are going to lower your elbows down like I did before, but did you notice that what I didn't do as I lowered my elbows down was back my hips up? So your hips need to stay in place. So this line here is a vertical line. That's the line that I would watch. And as you're lowering down, you're like, oh, You'll see, you might not make it all the way before, you might get to this point and go, okay, I can't go down any longer. And then you'll come back up. And one more piece, your elbows need to move towards your thighs and not out to the side. So we're adding in this piece here where we pull the elbows in as you go down, right? So you're trying to lower as far as you can You feeling it? Yeah. Um, what's another piece? One thing that makes this easier, and I've, it's in a previous class, is carrying your the weight here to not um, try to do this with an unsupported rib cage. Right. The first thing you're doing is you're dropping your ribs. Quadruped is not only hands and knees; it's also pelvis neutral in this plane and, and trying to hold your ribs up to the best of your ability as you come down, which means you're, you're using your, your torso throughout the exercise, which makes it easier on the um, arms. Come on up there, keep your hands on the ground, and a little rhomboid push-up, which is just letting your chest sink down, head and neck relax, and you're gonna move down and up between the shoulder blades. So the shoulder blades sink all the way together, and then when you come up and away, your shoulder blades are really wide. And then you're gonna come back down, and back up. You're going to go all the way up and have a seat. You want to sit on a, a, a roller here, flat side up, is a really nice surface to sit on. All right. 
So you're gonna reach your left arm out. So you're not, all, you're not working with your arm, you're working with multiple joints. The hand is one place to look, the elbow pit is another place to look, and maybe not so much look, but to feel, would be the position of the scapula. So those are like the three places you're always observing or always running through a mental checklist. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna turn your palm up. Actually, hold a bottle of beer or soda or whatever, water. It's interesting that water came to me last. I was like, what else do people drink? Oh, yeah, water. Um, pour it out behind you. So you're going to pour it out behind you with a certain amount of wrist, uh, elbow motion, yeah? A certain amount of wrist and elbow motion. But then you can continue to pour it out behind you from this arm bone, right? So it's not, you're not going to be like, oh, oh, it doesn't go anymore. You can also rotate this arm upper arm, and if you put your hands around it, you can kind of feel it, turning it backwards. So you're going for that maximal pour it out behind you motion, which is a combination of wrist, elbow, and shoulder. Um, if you have a lot of mobility here, what will tend to happen is you will turn more here than really what's stable for this joint and not enough here. So if you know when you turn back, like, oh, I can go back forever, don't go back so far here and instead stop yourself here and try to go a little bit more here. And then let's try the other side. All right, so you're, you have your bottle of water. I'm gonna pour it behind you. Pour it to a certain degree with your elbow. If you know you're going, I don't wanna say too far because I, it's just, you know if you're extra hypermobile here or not, so just watch kind of over twisting here. And then going the rest of the way with the upper arm. Now the cool thing is when you turn back with the upper arm, you see my trapezius here? You see how the turning of my arm shouldn't really affect my trapezius, but in a lot of cases it does. Meaning I turned, what do I want to say here? I go forward, I go forward with my wrist and my elbow, forward with my shoulder, and then I also went up and over with my scapula. That's why this is coming up, is my version of turning my arm is not happening at the glenohumeral joint. The whole scapula is coming up and coming down. So I want you to turn hand back, elbow back, shoulder back, and make sure that the scapula comes down with it as well. So you, as you look in the mirror, you'll end up seeing one trapezius lower than the other, which means the resting point of your scapula, like mine right now, is, is actually coming up. It's actually coming up and sitting up all the time. It's my neck's getting tighter and tighter. So if you're feeling a lot of neck tension, one way to decrease it is just turn back. I hear someone's alarm. Oh. Is that what it is? I was like, I don't think it's something. You know, that's the most persistent caller ever. <laughs> I feel like I'm just going to call you for 20 minutes until you pick up. All right, so that's what we're doing. You take a break for a second. What we're doing is we're trying to, when, when you look at your shoulder and you see elevated shoulders, right, which is an issue for a lot of people, a lot of neck tension, the solution logically is like, oh, my shoulders are high, what do I want to do? Pull them, pull them down. And so you're trying to pull them down, but one of the reasons this is high is because you're not only elevated, you're rotated, right? And that's what's making this height come up. The over-rotation is actually lifting up the scapula. It's like you do everything. Yes, but it's, but it's not, but we're not only doing things in front. I think that's what happens is we're like, oh, you're so much forward work is the problem, and you go, okay, well then I'll just pull everything backwards, right? We're, it's very linear. We yeah. see it in two dimension, and we're trying to correct in the two dimension, but this is rotational. It's not only that you're doing everything forward, you're doing it rotated inward, right? So you're gonna put your hands out, and that's why we're not, we don't do a lot of like shoulders back. I find shoulders back to never correct the actual issue, which is the forward rotation. It creates, it corrects one plane of it, but not all of it. So you're going to put your palms up, and you're going to turn it back, and then you're going to turn your upper arm bone back, and by doing so, 
this pulls down here, right? You're, you're rotating back, and then let your head, head hang forward. So you're creating opposition here. You're, you are creating your own length by, by rotating backwards and letting your head hang forward. And the rotating backward is a constant work. Like you never like rotating and then stop. You're trying to constantly turn more. That's what keeps the tension there is that you're actively rotating back. It's become isometric because you can't go any farther, but you're not stopping. You're not just holding your arms up in the air. You're still trying to turn back. Reach your elbows up a little higher and try to rotate them a little bit more. And then move your hands and elbows back to the wall behind you just a couple of inches. Nice nerve stretch as well. A couple big deep breaths. It's the ribs you're trying to move here. Okay, relax now for a second. Yeah. So that was, by all appearances, an almost unmoving exercise, right? You just put, like, you're holding your arms in the air, but that's not what you're doing. It's just that you had no more motion. You are, the arrows are going back, 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 down. That's what the arrow, that's the force arrows inside your body, but if you were to map out the exercise, it looks like you were just holding your arms up in the air, but that's not what you're doing. All right, come on down. Quadruped. The more you practice quadruped, the more form of kicks in the spine's relaxed right the spine is relaxed the abdominal wall on the front is not it's holding you up um, the shoulders are wider than your your pelvic bones and you want to pull your shoulders down away from your ears first before you get started so if you you see me here if i drop the plumb line from my nose it would end up in the middle point of my hand, which means that this is what I'm doing with my hands. You see how they're in my face? If you put your hands in front of your shoulders, your hands are below your face. All right, and then come on down. So it's not only hands or wrists beneath the shoulders, you have to have your wrists beneath your shoulders once your scapula are down. All right, now we're ready. Elbows pulled in towards each other, and you're going to lower down to the floor, toward the floor, or to the floor. Keep your sternum. It's almost like you're in the up part of the rhomboid push-up, right? So pull up. Hold that up as you go down. Seat again. However, you feel comfortable. Back the wrists together. Move it around a little bit if you can. I'm going to start this hand. Fingers. I used to never put this in the class because I was like, this is kind of like boring and slow, but we're not doing it enough, so then it has to be inserted back into class. And you can obviously hold this longer. We'll hit the thumb now, just turn that thumb up joystick style. And then you're not going to grab the tip, you're going to grab the base of the finger and pull that away from the joint. We're so, um, because we're so tight in through the, the thumb joint lower, like the more the saddle joint here, this upper joint tends to get kind of hypermobile, so you're not going to pull on it anymore, you're going to pull on this bone here, low. And you don't have to only pull straight back, you can pull in all different directions and see which direction. Um, 
feels the most tense. Now, as you pull this joint back, you want to make sure that you're not moving the wrist, right? The wrist stays fixed. No need to always start with the pinky. You can start with other fingers. I just do. They have kind of like a checklist. Probably be good for me to vary up my checklist. Ten years later. Don't forget the wrist, right? You're not only pulling the finger, you're dropping the wrist. All right, you're going to reach your hands out to the side. You're going to turn your forward out behind you with the lower arm, and then you're going to turn your upper arm back, and that's going to come up to the glenohumeral joint. And when you really focus on turning back from this joint, it's going to pull the scapula down. Now you can play with, play with the width of your elbows. Right? So right now, it's easier to do this when it's down. But as you come up, you'll start recognizing maybe the limitation of the range of motion of your shoulder where you can only get your elbows so far up before your shoulders want to come up too. So try to move within the range of motion of your glenohumeral joint, which is this, imagine a pin through here, like the only hinge you're moving is here. You don't want the actual pin to be lifting as well. If you prefer to do one at a time, you can. You can maybe use this hand to, to push this down to kind of stabilize it a little bit. You can move forward and back. You can move your head, like move your, drop your right ear to your right shoulder when you're in there and yawn that open. fingers, your knees are pelvis width, your hands are shoulder width, and all of those are not the same width. Shoulders down, and then you're going to go ahead, down away from your ears, and then you're going to go ahead and lower towards or to the floor without shifting back. one. Mm -hmm. Pull the elbows in towards each other. So really hold them in. Put a little bit of a bend like five degrees. And then rhomboid push up there. And shoulder blades together. Shoulder blades apart. So straight arm now, you know, straight arm, and just move between the shoulder blades and apart. See that? So there's no bending. It's 
It's all happening between your shoulder blades behind you. back to the seated position. Um, if you're going to get up off the floor, you're probably naturally going to use a little bit of arm support. Yeah. Um, yes, many can rise from the floor without, but you probably do use it. So let's look at the way that we're using it. So I know for me, this is going to be the direction that I go. What direction would you, which hand would you put down on the ground if you were to stand up right now? All right, so get that hand down onto the ground. So we don't all have to get up the same way, but let's look at the way that you are most likely to get up. For me, it's this. Like, I just know that I'm going to let's lean here. So lean and put that first point of contact down. doesn't have to be my point of contact. It can be yours. So whatever that is for you. Now look, look at your hands, because I notice that I use a flat hand when I use my right hand, but when I use my left hand, I brace it like this. So why don't you just get up and down off the floor a couple times to practice looking at how you use your hands? So I know that I would, I would do, I know that I would do this. I spent enough time watching me. I don't know why I do this, but this, I'm, my hand is, this hand is stronger in this position, and I have a hard time getting it down into this position naturally this goes like this. Naturally isn't the right word. I've trained over my life to do this. So find out what that is for you. Find out. Come up and down a few times and watch your hands. You watch your hands. And if you had to, if you were Diane Fossey and also a gorilla, what would your data look like on the way you use your hands when you come up? Be like, oh, I use I always, like, my pinky's always spread out. Like, if you had to had a journal, and you had to draw the shape of your hand, that's the level to which you should start paying attention to your own self. You'd be like, could you describe it in a journal? So come up and down a few times, and change, change your seating position, like go all the way, go all the way down, right? And then you're like, okay, what would I do here? And it's, it's always the, I don't use my hands. If you don't use your hands, not everyone, not everyone uses your hands. But if you do, great. Um, why don't you hold something? Why don't you hold something and see if that cha if that changes your your look? If you don't use your hand, that's fine. Um, now you're going to try to get up, changing something about that hand configuration. So what was a, what were a couple of samples of unique hands? Your wrist, but on on one side or both? Okay. So you're going to. Let's say that either you have some sort of, or you have some difference. You're going to practice coming up just making one hand look the same as the other. So if you have a wrist, try coming down. And it's not to do it quickly, it's to do it slowly. To go, oh, what is this? Does this wrist not like to bend? Is that why this fist comes here? And play with coming up slowly spreading out the fingers and using the hands. When you come down, I found, what did I find one time? That I would use my hands to hold me here to delay the, the bending of my knees. That I would actually use, I would rather do this and hold my weight here than hold my weight in my quads by coming down. So when I put my hands flat, it required that I sink down a little bit lower to move over. So just play around and then get up on the other side and see how you use your hands. Oh, that's good. All right, so Christiana, you see your thumbs here? So, yes. But then I need more. Right. So, but this is, it's to show that like you'll use a thumb to compensate for a hip. 
or a lake part that doesn't want to move into understanding the relationship between parts. So let's, that was kind of cool. So let's try putting our hands behind this. We didn't do enough of that, and I never do, which is why my chest and shoulders are so tight. Put your hands behind you so your fingers are pointing towards your feet, but your wrists are flat. And your wrists are shoulder width. Shoulder width. Bend your knees. And pick yourself up. Hold yourself here. Bend your elbows. Put a little flexion. There you go. Extending your elbows will put the load in your elbow joint and take it away from the shoulder. So putting a little bit of a bend will help you. And then you're shifting from side to side. So just like we did this, right? This is the behind us version. Open your feet a little wider. Get a, get a stronger base. Bend the elbows and then shift. So it's not really strength. It's hard to say like someone needs strength when you have, you, you have the parts, sometimes the access to the geometry just isn't there for mobility reasons. Good? You feel that in there? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Take a break for a second. You can always come back to this, right? Especially if you're not used to bearing weight on your wrists like this. Now all of a sudden this feels good, right? Yeah. Oh, well, we'll do this one. We do that one that hurt initially. Put your hands behind you with your fingers pointed the other way. Easier, right? So you might find that, oh, I do a lot of exercise like this for my shoulder, but that subtle change in hand position is changing what it's doing for you. So that's why you always want to make sure that you're aware if you have a small little geometry adjustment habit that is not allowing something to change for you. So wider, look down. Remember your wrists are the width of your shoulders, which are wider than your pelvis. Now, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna bend my elbows. <clears throat> bend my elbows so they go straight back. So same thing as the last one. See this? This is that on your hands and knees when you bend how they want to go out to the side, you're going to pull them in. Different. Same, you could make it the same. You could say, well, you're bending your elbows, but the difference between this plane and this plane is big for the shoulder, mm -hmm. the muscles that are only moved in this plane. So you're going to kind of bend back. Just practice. You can let the ribs relax. It's just more of oh, when I bend my elbows, what direction do they want to go? Turn your hands towards the front, if you can. No, I, I, oh, okay, I, sorry, I, sorry. Okay. Yeah, I, you know, just, I don't think you bend that that much in this direction. So if you're like, this, just like, like this is actually really great. This is a great wrist stretch, too, to put your hands the other way and then flex. I know. <laughs> well, you also kind of will get a sense of, like, I know what stretch I need right now because the way I know my shoulder feels. Then, of course, when you load it, different, same geometry of the shoulder, but when you ask your shoulder to carry that weight, inside the muscle changes. The movement of that muscle within it changes. Good. Flex. So there's coming up and down with your butt, or there's coming up and down with your elbows. Elbows versus pelvic thrusts. All right, and then take a break. How about... that movement work itself out. Let's go back to this. So this, uh, they still call this motion the beer can test. Like in PT, they still call it the beer can test. The empty can. The empty can, yeah, that's more. No, it's this, actually. Forward? Yeah. What, do they have a test for the back? Mm, I think they need All right, well, Whatever you want to call this, this motion is one of 
the best motions you can do while you're, you know, if you're feeling really tight, there's a tendency to want to go that, you know, like, oh, I just want to stretch. But what tends to happen is you retract the shoulder blades and lift the chest. And a, the sense is to get away from this forward, but you're missing some planes of motion. So this one can replace, like, oh, I just want to stretch my chest. Stretch your chest this way. This is a chest stretch. All right, you're going to turn everything behind you Focusing less on the lower half of the arm and more on the upper arm bone, turning back. And take some deep breaths. So if you want to make two parts over. You can even extend the fingers, right? Because that's going to further change the nerve situation. Drop your, one, drop your right ear towards your right shoulder as you do it. Your elbows up a little higher and just reach them away from you. Reach your hands away from you. There you go. Oh. All right. Let come down. The more better now the fourth or fifth time we've done that, you're just going to keep getting deeper. It's like an onion. You move the first part and it feels like it doesn't move. But just that little bit of movement eventually causes it to kind of peel away and then you see the tension on the, the next one. So the more you cycle through, which is the more movement that you do, the more it softens. All right, so let's come back to this one because we are less practiced in the arms behind us. All right, so does everyone know where your sternum is? There's your sternum. Like here's your rib cage. Do you imagine a skeleton? And then coming up is that kind of flat bone right here. So we're going to play with that bone. Well, we're playing with the rib cage, but that's a nice bone. So if you look at yourself from the side, bend your elbow a little bit and scoop your hips forward a little bit, which is going to pull your chest away from your shoulders a little bit. And um, watch me here for a second. You're going to lift your chest and then you're going to drop your chest. All right, and then you're going to lift your chest again. And then you're going to drop your chest and then you're going to go forward. Scoot your buttons forward a little bit, which is going to further kind of pull your ribs away from your back arm and then bend the elbows. Make sure you're squeezing them together. I could come up and push them together for you and just relax. Take a couple breaths there. You can lift and lower your chest a couple times in there. And then maybe move forward a little bit. Check your hands. Fingers spread. Can you stretch your thumbs out a little bit more towards each other than they are right now? Maybe rock your body to the right and to the left. Mm -hmm. All right, you can come up and out of that and have a seat. Palms out, and you're turning and burning. which is from top down. Sternum down. Um, what's another? I just remember this one. I should probably show you just in case. A lot of times when you're going to turn, watch me here, I can actually get more turn of my hand and of my elbow. See that? So you want to watch to make it, but this, this is a throwaway for, the, for anything here beyond this part of your spine. So while it makes it look like your hand will go farther, it's not related to any of the tissues that we're trying to mobilize here. So that's why you want to keep the rib cage down and focus the turn on from the glenohumeral joint down. So maybe it's the upper arm bone, the humerus, and the wrist that are displacing. Reach the elbows a little bit more away from you.
drop one ear to your, toward your shoulder. And you can let your arms rest, but then continue to move your head. You know, we think we talk a lot, I've written a whole book or two about the mobility of the feet and the ankles. Like, gosh, there's so many joints and they're hardly doing anything. But your neck is another one of those same places. Like, if you look at the, the cranium, the skull, and how it sits on all the vertebrae and all the parts between here and here, we do almost nothing with our neck. Like, it just, it never moves, like, your whole life. It barely has to do anything, and then it gets kind of movement starved between here and here. Um, so let's do some motion in that area. And there's like the basic motions, kind of like the cardinal directions, like we're like right and left and up and down. And those are good, but those are a small percentage, a tiny fraction of the total number of directions or movements that you do. So in the same way you vacuum your feet out by like practicing the mobility, you can think of doing that same thing with your neck, right? You, know, you can start with right and left. Now, you can keep moving your head in, in all these different directions, but remember that right now, like if I looked at my shoulders while I was doing my neck stretches, my shoulders are telling me that the relationship of the parts in my neck aren't really at the place where they get the most motion. So I always like to pair my neck exercises with this exercise because this thing that we're doing provides the environment in which the neck moves better. Right? This is putting a lot of pieces towards each other, and then you're trying to do big motions when, when things are more compressed, when they have less space. So I try to create the space first and then do the motion. That being said, this gets fatiguing after a while, so instead of waiting to move my neck, because there's nothing really wrong with any motion, is that I'll go ahead and I'll do it, but then I'll come back to it after I've rested up. So do this the entire time for whatever is possible for you, Continue to move your neck as you let your arms relax, but get back to it as soon as you can. And if you only want to do it one arm at a time, fine. Anyone else hear the crickles? Mm -hmm. I didn't hear any crickles until I got to this layer. That's kind of cool. But it's like up in my ears. Like it's really high, the crickles. Just imagine telling you to do this on a plane. I was on a plane. Yeah, yeah. I just got scratched. I did. I just like totally. Just do it. You should just go up with Katie's head. But don't say anything. You don't say anything. You just go into meditative state, and then you just put your arms out and you're in the seat, and you start doing it. I bet you that someone wouldn't even say anything just to watch what was going to happen. If you had tiny cocktail bottles on your hands, pour out. Can I have two Baileys, and then you just pour them into the cup? So the people can <laughs> exactly. and do this, and then it's like a win-win for it's everyone. Like all of your seat needs. Well, just invite them to do it too. Exactly. And be in your space. It was in Iceland. I actually wrote squatting in my seat, facing backwards, reading a book for like an hour because I couldn't stand sitting anymore. And my seat mates were fun with it. How about you did that? A necessity. <laughs> And plus it was in the middle of the night, so I'm sure everyone else was sleeping. 
Do you ever get people that like see you and then they start doing it too? Like, sure. Like, oh, I feel like, like you, you it's like become, allow them to, and they're like, oh, this is okay. Like, I feel like you have a yearning in your body to do stuff and simply just someone else doing it helps you go. It's a it's a lack of freedom that we feel because it's mm-hmm. often out of the you know, stepping out of the sedentary culture, but if someone else does like safety in numbers, it's like, okay, you'll do this with me? Oh, okay. That's pretty good. So you just have to be courageous and be that person. Okay. Um, actually, let's, let's end with something that's not our arms, just to mix it up a little bit. So here's just something I've been playing with. You can play with it too. It's, uh, start with this. So you might find that the rolling like a ball is where you, you want to work on, that this itself is, uh, you know. point for you. But then I'm going to I'm going to change it. So I'm going to go back to the mirror. So you're going to roll back, but when you come up, you're going to come up. I've got one foot in this position and the other foot underneath. Alright? So I'm just going to roll back. And so now my feet aren't straight and straight down. So I'm taking the rolling like a ball and changing it just a little bit. Alright, so you have that. Then you're going to do that on the other side. Right, so you're going to roll like a ball. And come up. I'm just playing with that a little bit. It just changes, right? It changes. You could do a hip stretch or you could add it to the end of your rolling like a ball. All right, now go back to the first leg. And then you're going to use your hands. Look at, look at what I did with my hands. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my hands. I changed, I changed something about the way that I use my hands just to use my body differently while I'm thinking about it. And you're going to come up here. So this is this is a big stretch, right? So if you're like, no, my knee doesn't do that, then you have a couple options. One, don't do it. Two, use your hands to kind of come up and down. So you're, when you use your hands, it means that you're carrying your weight on your arms. So you can... You can do it like this and say, I'm just going to ease, right? In which case you can control the knee flexion. Or you can come right up and you can practice. You can practice coming up and coming down from the ground. If you're like, so what you're actually, what you're having to do, you're using your leg. Your leg is what's pushing into the ground. And it's what's your, your motion here, up here in your thigh. That's how you're coming up. You're coming up because your leg is pushing. My leg is lifting me. But it's the muscles up here that are moving the thigh bone like this that are allowing me to come up and come down. Come up and down. And then you try the other side. And if you're like, there's no way, then you use your hands. So you want to see one, can I get into the geometry of the position? Or is that not available to me? The geometry isn't available to you. You go, would this geometry be available to me if it was a little less extreme, meaning I could reduce some of the tension. So you're taking the move and you're breaking it down to find at what point it is accessible to you. If you move this foot out a little bit wider, it's a little bit easier. When everything's really tight, the geometry pushes you back down on the ground. You get a rotation here. So the reason you open this up is so that some of your weight is carried on this leg and some of it's carried on this leg. The closer these legs are towards each other, the less, the more you have to do with this hip, harder it is. So the more you can spread, the easier, because you're kind of like going from the right to the left. So you can practice coming up and down a couple of times. Uh, try to keep this heel down. And so you have long legs, so go a little wider. And use this back hand for a second. So this is a this would be like a squat exercise. This would help you work on a squat because it's challenging your hips. Then what do you do? You put it together. You roll back and you come up. And if you're like can't get that that first little thing, that transfer, then use your hands. You go here and watch. Whoop. Whoop. You can push with your hands. And then think wide. The wider you can think on this one. And then you have a sword in your left hand. And you shing, 
right? <laughs> and then you try the other side. Very dynamic. Use your hands or don't. It's up to you. All right. That was great. Shoulders. This. This is your new, like, this is just, it's, it looks like nothing, and it is moving so much of everything, especially, I mean, the, the vital nature of this area of your body, I mean, it's, your whole body is vital, but the environment of this area has great implications, right? Your container is affected by your arms, and that container affects the mobility of things within that container, right? And we want full mobility of our heart and lungs. And that is not unrelated to the mobility of your shoulders or your hands, all right? Okay, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Now how are you gonna get up? Thank you.